Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the August 2023 sheet load of cards printable. I hope you'll stick around, see how they were created and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I told you all about the new August 2023 sheetload of cards printable and how you could download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet seen that video and you would like to check it out and get your free copy, check out the description box below and it is linked right next to the debut video. Today I'll be showing you how I make my first set of cards and giving you some tips along the way. Also, my team of collaborators will be joining me. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they've created and leave them some love. There will be videos here on YouTube and posts on Instagram. To get to the Instagram posts, I just have a link in the description box, quick and easy. To see the videos here on YouTube, there are a few different ways. First of all, try out that hashtag in the title and see if that brings up the videos. If it doesn't, shortly after our videos go live, I will have a playlist for you where you can go see them all and that is linked in the description box. Also in the description box are direct links to each of the creator's channels, so if the playlist isn't ready yet, you can stop by their channels and check it out. Now if you're going to show us your sheet load and share what you've created with August 2023, make sure to use the hashtags at the top of the printable. We always love to see what you're creating as well. In front of me are the main supplies I'll be using today, and yesterday I told you more about those, so make sure to check out that video if you're interested. As I start the process, I'll let you know about other products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I did mention it in yesterday's video and it is on the printable, but if you followed this month's cutting guides and layout including decorating the inside, you will not have any pattern paper scraps left over. To get started, I'm going to be cutting my two pattern papers per the cutting guide instructions and to make sure that I have pattern paper for all of my pieces, I am going to start by cutting two inch tall strips off the bottom of the pattern paper. This is a little different than normal, but it's going to ensure that we get all of our pieces when we're done. So if your paper has an orientation, make sure to keep that in mind when you make the first cut. I want my stripes to go horizontal, so I'm going to rotate this piece 90 degrees and cut those two inch strips off the bottom. Then I'll rotate it back so it's sitting in the correct orientation for the card and I'm going to cut two columns that are five and a quarter inches wide and then I'm going to cut that last little strip in half which means it gets cut into two pieces that are three quarters of an inch wide. Now because that is so tiny I brought in my scotch removable tape to hold that in place while I made the cuts. Now on the second piece of pattern paper I'll show you a little bit of an easier way to cut those so you don't have to get out your tape. Next I'm going to bring back in my five and a quarter inch wide strips and cut those into pieces that are four inches tall. Now while I do that I do want to point out that since you need every little bit of this pattern paper make sure not to do what I call generous cuts. Cut it right at the dimension or maybe just a tad under. Next up are the two inch wide strips off the bottom and we're just going to cut those right in half at six inches. Then the skinny strips that will end up decorating the inside, we're going to take each of those and from each one we're going to cut two pieces that are two and a quarter inches tall and two pieces that are one and three quarters inches tall. Now don't forget you do not need to write down or remember any of these dimensions because you can check out the debut video and get your free printable so you have it right next to you. 
Now I'm going to cut that second piece of pattern paper in almost the same exact way, but like I mentioned before, I'll show you an easier way to cut those three quarter of an inch strips. First of all, you will need to start the same way by getting your two inch strips off the bottom. Then instead of cutting your five and a quarter inch wide strips first off that large top piece, you're going to do the three quarter of an inch wide pieces. Then you just trim that in half at the five and a quarter and then the rest of the cuts look just the same. After the pattern papers are cut, you're going to chop up some cardstock. So you'll want to get out two pieces in a coordinating color to map that six inch by two inch strip. My first cut for CS1 is going to be with my cardstock in a vertical or portrait orientation, and I'm going to cut these down to six inches wide. Now there is going to be some leftover of the cardstock, so later I'll show you how I use up just a little bit of it. Once I have my six inch wide strips, these just get rotated and I cut until I have eight pieces that are two and a quarter inches tall. Next up is CS2 and the printable calls for a quarter sheet. I went ahead and just grabbed a half sheet I had handy, but this is definitely a great piece for scraps. The printable originally calls for a two inch wide by half inch tall piece for your sentiment, and this is definitely one of those places you can make it your own. For instance, I knew that my sentiment was going to be wider, so I brought it in, measured it out, and realized that I would need my pieces to be three inches wide by a half inch tall. So I went ahead and cut down eight pieces that size. Your next step might be to prepare your card bases and to do this you'll get four pieces of cardstock, cut it in half and then fold it in half, but I did already have some in my stash so I just pulled out eight. Now that all of the pieces are cut, we can start assembly. The first thing I'm gonna do is put my pattern paper piece B onto the CS1 cardstock mats. Later, these will be angled onto pattern paper piece A and will cut off the excess. So that's why they're a little bit longer than a regular A2 card. Now to help me get at least one end flush, I am going to bring in a little helper and for me that is my score buddy. You can bring in anything that has a ledge. It could be a trimmer, it could be a stamp positioner. Find something that works if you want to give this a try. You just need something that has a little ledge to it. I add some adhesive to the back of my pattern paper strip, place my cardstock mat onto my score buddy making sure that bottom end is right up against that ledge, and now what I can do is place my pattern paper up against that same ledge and move it left to right to center it as best as possible. Now you definitely don't need to bring in a helper like I did, I just think it makes this process a little bit quicker. Some of my pattern paper strips were slightly wider than the cardstock mat, but because later we're going to be trimming off the ends, don't worry if that same thing happens to you. Just keep getting those pieces matted. I brought back in my pattern paper piece A, and now we're going to get those matted strips adhered and angled across that piece. Now if you don't like this at an angle, you could definitely make it straight across and you can also adjust the angle how much you want to rotate it. Definitely make it your own, make it fit the decoration that you're going to do. For mine, I did pretty much stick with the angle from the printable. I did make sure before I adhered too many down that my sentiment would still fit below it. And lastly for this piece, you'll bring in some scissors or use a little trimmer and cut off the excess from each side. While I finish adhering those pieces and cutting off the excess, I wanted to stop by with an extra special shout out. In the month of July, I had some channel members earn their one year membership badge. So I just wanted to take a minute to recognize them.
monthly support from my channel members helps keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below. Now that my pattern papers are ready, we're going to get these pieces put on the card bases. Now as with any step for sheet load, you could use foam tape for dimension, but I did keep my card today pretty flat, so I added adhesive to the back of pattern paper piece A and centered that onto my card front. Here's a look at the two combinations I have for my set today, but keep in mind if you use double sided paper and the fronts and backs can be mixed and matched, you could definitely come up with more combinations. My next step was to get the sentiments ready, so I brought in this Hero Art stamp set and I'll be using the Just Saying Hi stamp. I'm going to be using blueberry ink to match some of the blues on the pattern paper. And so I only have to set my stamp up once, I did bring in my mini Misty. I took a minute to try to center my sentiment and get it straight across. And luckily once I inked it up and stamped it for the first time, it was pretty straight and centered. But there was a little bit of the area that didn't get stamped. So since I'm using my Misty, I can put it right back down in that corner and just re-stamp that and the rest of them looked brilliant. As I continue to stamp my sentiments, I just wanna say how glad I am that stamp positioners came into the card making world. This makes multiple sentiment stamping so easy. Once all those sentiments are stamped, we can get them added to the cards. Now the sketch does suggest putting it along the bottom edge, but you could definitely move these to the top, move it onto the pattern paper strip, use a completely different shape. For me, I'm gonna stick pretty close once again to the sketch, and I'm gonna rotate my card and kind of get my sentiment put in place, and I try to make sure that there's an even spacing between the bottom corners and the outside of the pattern paper. Once I have it where I want it, I go ahead and press that adhesive right into place. Then I'm gonna finish up the remaining cards so they all have a sentiment. Once your sentiments are in place, you could definitely be done decorating the front, but like I mentioned earlier, I had some cardstock scraps that I wanted to use up if I could. So I decided to bring in my Cat Scrappiness Stitch Foliage dies, and I'm going to be using the pink scraps to put a little branch on the striped strip, and then I brought in one of my white cardstock scraps, and I'll be putting a white branch onto the floral fronts. I die cut all of those off screen and now I am bringing in a new to me product, Barely Art Glue. My friend Karen of Karen's Crafting Company sent this to me for my birthday, so I was super excited to try it. Because the branches are so thin on here, I needed a nice liquid glue and I will tell you this worked perfectly. Thanks again Karen. I added adhesive to the back of each branch, placed it onto the card fronts, and then I sat it under a block so they could adhere. Once all of those were in place, I gave them about five minutes to dry before moving on. And last, but certainly not least, are using up those final pieces of paper we cut to decorate the inside of the cards. Now per the sketch, I do suggest putting an angle at the bottom of each. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the smaller ones and one of the longer ones and I put them so the bottoms are together and flush. Then at the same time I'm going to take my scissors and cut an angle into them. That way the angles are the same for each size and then I'm going to use those to cut the remaining pieces kind of like a template. I just put my scissors right up against the edge I cut and snip through two more. Once those were all cut, I brought back in my cards and now we're gonna get them added to the inside. For me, I decided to go with the longer flag would be the background pattern paper on the front and the smaller one would be the one that was a two inch strip. I put adhesive on the back and then I put it about an eighth of an inch down from the fold and in from the side. This way the card is going to close, there won't be anything hampering that. And I just kept going until all of them were decorated. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the August 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget if you want to download the free printable to check out yesterday's video, which is linked in the description box below. And now make sure to go check out all of the collaboration team creations by either using the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.